Welcome to the birthday problem. In a room of 23 people, there's a 50% chance two people will have the same birthday. It would seem like it would take more than 23 people to have a 50% chance of two people having the same birthday, but it really doesn't. Let's take a look at why. To begin, it will be easier to determine the probability of 23 people not having a matching birthday. If we can figure out the probability of no match, then the probability of a match will just be 100% minus the probability of no match. As an example, if there is a 25% chance of an event not happening, then there is a 100% minus 25% or 75% chance of the event happening. And now let's consider a simpler problem. Let's begin by determining the probability of two people not having a matching birthday. To determine this probability, we will have a probability for each person, and then the product of the probabilities will give us the total probability. So for the first person, their birthday can be any day of the year, and therefore the probability of not having a match is 365 divided by 365, which represents a 100% chance there is no match from the first person because there are no other birthdays to match. And now for the second person, the probability their birthday won't match the probability of the first person is 364 divided by 365. 364 because their birthday can be any day of the year except the day of the first birthday. And then this product gives us the probability of two people not having a matching birthday. And now if we expand this to the probability of three people not having a matching birthday, notice how the first two fractions are the same as the probability of two people not having a matching birthday. So if we focus on this third fraction or the third person, the probability their birthday does not match the first two people would be 363 divided by 365. Their birthday can be any day of the year except the two birthdays from the first two people. The product of these three fractions gives us the probability of three people not having a matching birthday. If we expand this to four people not having a matching birthday, notice how the first three fractions are the same as the probability of three people not having a matching birthday. And then for the fourth fraction, this represents the probability that the fourth person's birthday does not match the birthdays of the first three people, which gives the probability of 362 divided by 365. The fourth person's birthday could be any day of the year except the three birthdays from the first three people. And this product gives us the probability of four people not having a matching birthday. And now let's take a look at having 23 people with no matching birthdays. We would have a product of 23 fractions, where the first fraction is 365 divided by 365, and the 23rd fraction is 343 divided by 365. This product will give us the probability of 23 people not having a matching birthday. If we wanted to, we could change the form of this product. Notice all the denominators are 365, and because there are 23 fractions, we could write this product as 1 over 365 raised to the 23rd power times the product of the numerators. Most calculators cannot handle this calculation, but it does come out to approximately 0 0.4927 or 49.27%. This means the probability of 23 people where at least two people have a matching birthday would be equal to one minus a probability of 23 people with no matching birthdays. And this difference comes out to approximately 0 0.5073 or 50.73%. So this is the reason why it only takes 23 people to have a 50% chance of two people having the same birthday. Let's see if we can expand this formula and come up with a formula for the probability of having n people with at least two people having a matching birthday. If we go back to the probability of 23 people not having a matching birthday expressed in this form here, let's focus on writing this product using factorials. For a simpler example, if we have seven factorial divided by four factorial and expand these factorials, notice how it does simplify to seven times six times five. Applying this idea to this product, we can write this product as 365 factorial divided by 342 factorial. 
And now that we have this product, we can write this as 365 factorial divided by the product of 365 raised to the 23rd power and the factorial of 365 minus 23. And if we expand this to n people, we can simply replace 23 with n, which gives us the probability of n people not having a matching birthday as 365 factorial divided by the product of 365 raised to the power of n and the factorial of 365 minus n. Which means the probability of having n people with at least two people having a matching birthday would have to be one minus this quotient. And before we go, here's a table that shows the probability of having n people with at least two people having a matching birthday. Thank you for watching.